In February 1919, a teenage girl accompanied her family to Hastings for a holiday. A 12-year-old brother had been ill and needed to convalesce by the sea. But Hastings in February proved dull, and so, in an attempt to relieve his boredom and hers, his 17-year-old sister made up a serial story to amuse him. It proved to be an enthralling tale of adventure and romance, and it caught the attention of her literary father, who encouraged his daughter to finish the story and submit it for publication. Thus, in September 1921, one month after her 19th birthday, Georgette Hayes saw her first novel, The Black Moth, published in both Britain and America, to excellent reviews. Nearly 100 years later, that book is still in print. Little though she knew it then, The Black Moth marked the beginning of Georgette Hayes' remarkable writing life. <coughs> A born storyteller, Georgette Hare was also a compulsive writer. In the first dozen years of her career, she published 14 novels and 10 short stories and had tried her hand at historical fiction, contemporary fiction and detective fiction. In 1935, 80 years ago this year, she wrote her first Regency novel, Regency Buck, of which she afterwards said in a rare moment of self-praise, I'm inclined to think it is a classic. I don't really know how I came to write anything so good. <laughs> I do remember putting in a lot of work on it and how I loved writing it. Her 1937 Waterloo novel, An Infamous Army, considered one of the finest accounts of the battle in fiction, was critically acclaimed and recommended reading to students at Sandhurst. That same year, Heinemann issued its 25th reprint of Heyer's early story, These Old Shades as part of a special leather-bound, guilt-embossed series of 12 eminent authors that included, besides Georgette Heyer, Joseph Conrad, John Galsworthy, Elizabeth von Arnhem, D.H. Lawrence, Willa Cather and Somerset Maugham. Heyer's publishers were not alone in appreciating the quality of her writing. Her readers also loved her stylish prose, her ability to draw a character in a sentence or two, her witty dialogue, ironic comedy, clever plots, and her insight into human nature. Fueled by her passion for creating characters and building a world for them to inhabit, Georgette Hare often wrote with extraordinary facility. On one occasion, 16th of July, 1941, she wrote to her publisher about her ideas for a new novel, confessing that, naturally, it's a very fine work and immensely entertaining, absorbing, witty, scintillating and erudite. <laughs> well, what I mean is it will be when I get around to writing it. <laughs> No, then, I haven't started it since you must know. Less than one month later, on the 10th of August, 1941, she wrote again, here with the top copy of Pharaoh's Daughter. I make it 88,000 words. I hope you are impressed. Just under a month note, I never thought I should be able to type straight away, but it was a howling success, and I went on and on and on with only one hitch, lasting about an hour, when I sat back and wondered what was going to happen to the various persons assembled in the book. In 1944, she wrote her own personal favourite among her many novels. Friday's Child was a triumph. Mm. It sold out its first edition printing of 70,000 copies in a matter of weeks. And finally... <coughs> sorry. <laughs> finally convinced her that the Regency novel was indeed her forte. Friday's Child is a delicious comedy of manners, full of wit and vivacity, with a cast of superbly drawn characters. After all, who can forget Ferdy Fakenham and Nemesis, or George Lord Rotham and his propensity for duels, or Gil Ringwood's brilliant reasoning as to why they must hide Hero from her errant husband, Sherry? <laughs> Hare's best novels, The Georgians and the Regencies, were those in which she gave full rein to her comic genius and her passion for historical detail, and it was these novels for which her readers clamoured. And however much she overtly scorned them or protested their worth, in her heart, Georgette Hare truly valued her books. She put the very best of herself into her novels and she loved writing them. As her first biographer, Jane Aiken Hodge, astutely observed, to write romantic comedy supremely well as she did, she must have enjoyed it. Years later, her son, Richard, would tell me that his mother was a compulsive weaver of stories and that it was just talk to say she had to write another regency to pay tax. She was, in fact, a consummate writer, with a literary ancestry that drew on the works of Shakespeare, Jane Austen, and Dickens, among others. 
Through the 1950s and 1960s, she continued to write the delightful comedies of manners with the clever, laugh-out-loud imbroglio endings that make her readers return to her books again and again. Books like The Grand Sophie, Cotillion, Venetia, Sylvester, The Unknown Ajax, Frederica and Black Sheep. For the Heyer reader, the titles alone are often enough to make them smile or even laugh out loud with amusement and fond remembrance of the living, breathing characters of Heyer's creation. There is a common misconception that Georgette Heyer's novels were not reviewed, but from her first novel in 1921 to her last in 1972, she was extensively and frequently favourably reviewed in the major papers in both in Britain, America and the Antipodes with 40 of her books reviewed in the Times Literary Supplement alone and two reviews in Time magazine. She always yearned for affirmation that what she wrote was good and in her heart of hearts she knew it was true, but still she did not dare believe that her books would outlast her. She once said, most of my works would die with me, I fear, but one or two might continue selling for a while. Well, it is far more than one or two that have continued selling, and so far from dying, her books have become iconic, and her Regency novels have created a genre. Today, Hare's literary influence is acknowledged by writers across the world, while her readers continue to find comfort and great joy in her many novels. It is for these reasons that we are here today, to pay tribute to the woman whose literary legacy continues to endure. Today, Georgette Hare joins the ranks of those great British writers whose contribution to the cultural and creative life of this nation is officially recognised with a blue plaque. It is a tremendous honour and one of which I am certain that Georgette Heyer would be proud. Thank you. Mm.